Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to take a look at a discussion on an online forum where people who used to play Beyblade but have since drifted away are talking about the current generation of Beyblade, Beyblade X. Let's dive in. The Beyblade anime is amazing. It's about eight times better than I imagine. The protagonist hasn't won a single match in the first season. Is he using a tripio or something? Is the protagonist Beyblade a tripio? Even when his first fan is watching his match, he loses. How can he lose this? His fan must enjoy watching him lose. He probably likes rooting for weak characters. I've never seen a protagonist lose with such a plot. This is really interesting. Tyson was strong, wasn't he? He even loses to YouTubers. How do kids feel watching this? I can't believe they're still making Beyblade anime these days. But even if he loses, it's just a toy game. If you lose, you'll get heavily criticized. Um. People who seriously criticize others over a toy game are just revealing how insignificant they are. It sounds interesting. Maybe I'll watch it. The protagonist gets told by his friends that he has no talent for Beyblades. Teaching kids the harsh realities of life. For those who haven't watched it, there are actually two protagonists. The one losing is a novice blader, while the other one hides his identity with a mask but was originally a top blader in the strongest team. Genius, disadvantage, strong opponent, doesn't matter. I win. Versatile, uses various bays skillfully and wins brilliantly. Popular guy, keeps losing. That's the reality of a pro team. They probably want viewers to feel that it's not that easy. I've only read the beginning, but the protagonist is too weak. Does he get stronger later? He'll probably awaken in the second season and then win every match. His Beyblade gets destroyed. In the promotion test match in front of his only fan, he loses every battle. What will trigger his awakening? It's a hobby anime, so he might have to die and come back to life. It's an anime where the only good thing is the cute girl, Nanairo Multi. There's this guy, Multi, who conveniently stayed an amateur all the time. Do we know this character's gender? Unknown. Sometimes it looks like they have a chest. We can't know for sure. Judging by the shoulders and build, it's probably a guy. Seriously? If there's a cute boy, I have to watch it. But I'm skeptical if they can surpass our max in cuteness. There's no sense of despair like when bays were destroyed by blade sharks, right? It gets destroyed in the first episode. Start a thread once they can create a black hole with a Beyblade. Supposedly, his growth rate is the fastest among pros. I hope Bird Coon wins against Phoenix Wing. But the current Beyblade protagonists aren't as obnoxious as Tyson. Tyson did a lot of silly things even in the G-Revolution days. The protagonists back then were always doing something childish. It might have been a time when kids could just be kids. But it was nice to see them acting like kids. Do the current bays have interesting gimmicks like Trippio? What gimmick does Trippio have? I heard they planned to release a reissue of Trippio, but it got cancelled because it could catch fingers. Official statement. We'll reissue old Beyblades with the current system, Trippio reissue announced. While making the latest version of Trippio, they found that it catches fingers with the current launcher. Trippio development halted. Interesting. I want to see the toy maker's determination. I want them to reissue the originals as they were, not as revivals or remakes. Are there not many requests for that? If you used the old ones now, they'd break after one match. We'll have them battle each other, so it's fine. I want to collect all the Bakudan bays again, but it seems that dream won't come true. They even appear in my dreams, where I'm happy having all the Bakudan bays. The ending song from the latter half of 2002 was amazing. What was the opening song, Athlete of Love, about in the first series? The current toys are well made. The system where gears engage and accelerate in the stadium is fun to watch. The inventor must be smart. But isn't the Bakuten's magnet system smarter? Beyblade was already almost perfect with Bakuden. The complexity of the gimmicks, the metal parts. The stadium designs, Bakuden did it all first. 
Bakudin is amazing. The gear idea is good, but it can't surpass Bakudin in other aspects. There are not enough gimmicks. Like metal balls or rubber tips. They'll probably cover that more in the future. I like Bakudin, and I want to support the current Beyblade too. It seems to be selling well now. When I showed my nephew my old Beyblades, he was amazed. It's amazing how Beyblade becomes popular every time it makes a comeback. Do the current Beyblades shatter when they lose? They come apart into pieces as a feature. It's called Burst Finish. Will they ever release RC Beyblades again? In the Burst series, they didn't release any controllable ones. There were some with motorized tips, though. Those looked chunky and didn't have much appeal. If there's another Beyblade series, they should measure body temperature or brainwaves before launching. And input that into the bay to control it with brainwaves. Big Bang Pegasus is fitting as the main character's Beyblade. I was amazed by its system that speeds up and goes wild at the very end. Whoever thought of that is amazing, but it seems there was something similar in the original series too. The mechanism that recharges the spin force with time or impact was in the first generation too. The Bakudan engine gear system had a lot of appeal. It was good for the anime's dramatic effect too. The engine wasn't a real motor but a mechanical gimmick that reproduced an engine. Which made it a great toy and allowed for the pure enjoyment of spinning tops. It was interesting to see the evolution from spin gear to magnacore to engine gear. Bays with engine gear had thick blade bases, giving them a genuine machine feel, which I liked. Why do they take physical damage just from spinning tops in Beyblade? The current ones don't cause damage. It's a sport now. In Bakuten, bladers got hurt by flames or explosions caused by bays. It's considerate of the times, and it feels good. Do Tyson appear in the current anime? No, they don't. A protagonist team that keeps losing sounds like Juju Kaisen. They're not exactly protagonist side. It's a three-person team, so if they win two matches, they win overall. Doesn't that make the protagonist feel miserable? The team members are a genius who once reached the top and a versatile, talented streamer. So they carry the team, winning every match even though the protagonist loses all his. And the one who loses all the time is the team leader. There's no way the final episode ends with his first win, right? If it does, it would be amazing in a way. Plot-wise, X has to lose first before Bird Coon can get his first win. Hellside seems to have some backstory. So he might either get stronger or become an enemy. Will the protagonist turn into a villain from here? You need the strength to rise after failure these days. It's not a game anymore. Scriptwriter. If he keeps losing until the final episode, it would be hilarious. What if it happens? It would be the best, a legend, it would be in the Hall of Fame. If the protagonist is so weak that they switch the main character halfway through, Hollywood adaptation is next. If it's that full of funny moments, I'd like to watch it on Nico. I'm from the Bakudan generation, but Beyblade has a history. Well, to contribute to Beyblade sales, I might watch the latest one. It seems there is a cute boy. Simply put, the new Beyblade story sounds interesting. By making the other two the winning members, their characters are easier to understand, and the protagonist has an underdog position. Which adds to the story. It sounds fun.